Next question is from Alex X eight three seven. Any tips to increase mind muscle connection for the back? Oh yeah, this is a big one that mm. I would have to really focus. Pretty much every new client that I had, this was the hardest area for them to feel. Probably because they can't see it. It's behind you. Um, we don't. We're not really familiar with the the, the feeling of a muscle uh, in the back contracting. So there are a couple tricks uh, that I used uh, that would help. Now, as a trainer, one of the easiest things I could do is literally touch the muscle I want the person to feel. Right. That outside feedback helps the person focus on feeling the muscle. But if you're doing this yourself, there's a couple things you could do. One thing you could do is focus on pulling with your elbows. And that sounds weird, but if you're doing a row, imagine you're pulling with the elbows rather than pulling with the hands. In fact, what you might want to try with that is a, is a lighter grip. So rather than gripping really, really tight with your fist, mm -hmm. you grip with kind of the ends of your fingertips. Obviously, you're going to use a lot less weight uh, in order to do this. And then you imagine that you're pulling with the elbows and you might be able to feel more of a connection uh, to the back with doing that. And then the second thing you can do is to pre-exhaust uh, the back muscles with yeah. an isolation movement. So a pullover or a straight arm pull down, Start your workout with that. Feel the muscles in the back a little bit with that. Then go do your rows and your pull downs and stuff, and it should make it easier. The only problem with that is that if you already have a really poor connection and you don't understand how how the back works uh, and activates, I think that you go over and you do an isolation exercise and you just do a point. The reason why I think this is so difficult for us is that we just are never in that. We're never yeah. using those muscles. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're so anterior driven. We're, uh, we're so rounded forward. Everybody is even people with pretty damn good posture still kind of have this slight forward shoulder because mm -hmm. we do everything in front of us. Yeah. Nobody types on a computer behind them. Nobody is answering their phone behind them. You're doing everything in front. So we can't help but have our bodies kind of shaped that way. And the worse you are, the more difficult it is for you to activate your, because everything is in the position of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you can get, so for me, like teaching a client as I would, I would go in and manually take their shoulder girdle and move it back and mm -hmm. be like, okay, look at when you take your shoulders and we move back here, now we can engage the back. Mm -hmm. If your shoulders are forward and you pull Pull weight into your body, your arms are going to do all the work and you're not going to feel anything in the back. So it's all in that shoulder girdle and getting them to understand that that needs to pull back in order to engage the back muscles. That's where I find yeah. that that's the heavy most emphasis on posture yes. in the very beginning too. That it's definitely a lot of times the shoulder is getting in the way of that. And two, it might sound simple, but a lot of times like I'll just, I really want to focus on one at a time, like one side at a time. I know that a lot of compensations happen, you know, when we're adding both arms and we're trying to pull simultaneously a lot of times people don't you know can't like hold themselves and stabilize themselves properly and really understand like that connection and feel it as much and so i'll do like unilaterally and then we'll we'll, we'll really kind of hone in on the posture of it and trying to drive it in uh you know and drive those shoulders back yeah one more thing too is uh, how you prime uh, before your workout can make all the difference in the world uh one of the best priming movements before a back workout is uh, prone cobra Prone Cobra requires no equipment, and if you if you follow the movement, if you do the movement properly, in other words, you just copy the movement, and we have a video on Prone Cobra, so we'll make sure to link that in the show notes as well. If you do that before you do your back workout, because you'll pre-exhaust the back muscles a little bit, you'll feel them connect a little bit through Prone Cobra, it should be easier to feel them uh, in your back workout. And literally, it's a spend five minutes doing Prone Cobra Move into your back workout, and uh, and then you should have a better connection.